Hello and welcome to the session. In today's session, we will be discussing about the sequential circuits. Now, sequential circuits are very, very important circuit as far as design of a computer is concerned. For example, slide control, please. Uh, what we will, what we need to discuss is that some of the things which we really need to see in sequential circuit are very much related to combinational circuits. So the session which we have conducted last time about uh, that combinational circuit is one of the requirement for this particular session and I request you to go through that particular session as well as study the material. It is very, very important that you study the material Otherwise, you will be facing problem in that particular sense. Slide. Okay. Now, this particular session covers block one session and uh, block one unit four. So, this particular session covers block one unit four of MC Swell, and this is a very important uh, section. Because uh, uh, what we started with, we started with von Neumann architecture, where we defined the architecture of a computer system. Then we went on to discuss about the floating point and the fixed point numbers, which are very, very important, and the error detection code. So this is what we discussed in unit one and two. Now in unit three, we went on to discuss about the sequential circuit. Now unit one and two are primarily focused on the basic information about the computer, right? How data is represented, why data will be used, uh, uh, I mean, you find floating point overflow or fixed point overflow in your programs. So that was very much related to your programming environment. However, uh, unit three and unit four are more focused onto the content of what is there within the computer system. Now that is very, very important for you. Why I'm saying that it is very, very important for you? Because it's a course on computer organization and knowing internals of a computer are very important for us. On the other hand, this particular section unit three and unit four are definitely going to be slightly more complex. Why? Because over here you need to do some logic design. Therefore, whatever we discuss today has to be supported additionally with your block. You have to study the material, you have to solve the problems, okay? Otherwise, you will not be getting the best out of this particular session as well as this particular course, okay? Now, to begin with, uh, like what we are going to do in this particular session today, we'll be discussing about sequential circuits. First, we will be defining sequential circuits, like what exactly they are, what are the meanings and so on and so forth. Then we will be defining a very important sequential circuit, which is a part of the whole design, right? So that is going to be flip-flops. And then we'll be discussing about a typical sequential circuit, which is called the counter circuit. It is one of the most important circuit in IP8086 uh, kind of family, right? Uh, X86 family, which was, why? Because uh, this particular uh, computer is a complex set, uh, complex instruction set computer and requires uh, like a number of, uh, number of uh, steps to execute instruction. So counter is becomes very, very important. So we will be discussing about the design of the counter so that you can be comfortable with the sequential circuits. Well, first the definition of sequential circuit, right? Very simple, a circuit whose output is dependent on the input and current state of the circuit. So now this is what makes it slightly different from the normal, uh, uh, normal circuit. Uh, let's compare it to the river flow. Right. If I just have a river flowing, it's a combinational circuit where data simply keeps on flowing from a series of gates. Right. But in sequential circuits, there is current state of the circuit. Okay. And then there is going to be the next state. It is something like where you have a sort of uh, like, like suppose we build some dams. 
right? So those dams will be checking, checking the flow or will be exhibiting some state like dam is half full or completely full and on that basis the flow of the next like how much water will flow is determined. In this particular case since it is binary so obviously everything is going to be 0 and 1 only. And the second thing which we are going to discuss here is uh, or you can see in the slide is it is an interconnect, interconnection of combinational circuits and storage elements and those storage elements are called flip flops which store binary information that indicates the state of sequential circuit at that time. So the state is defined by the current uh, value which is being stored and what can that value be in a flip flop? Either it can be a value 0 or it can be a value 1. So it is as simple as that but still we are not familiar with it. We have to go through it further. Okay. Now why these are needed? right? Use of cases, right? Where useful for cases, what kind of cases? Where series of events occur one after another. So you are dependent on first event, then the second event occurs, then the third e event occurs, and so on and so forth, right? So what you require is the stored value, okay? Uh, that stored value, for example, in, in, in a C program, suppose you are dealing with a looping construct, then the present value of looping construct i, looping variable i, very uh, changes the phenomena. So if i is reaching to the maximum value then the looping construct has to stop. Similarly in uh, sequential circuits we have the similar kind of uh, arrangement where the current state determines the next state. But this is at a very lower level we are talking about. Okay, And uh, this you will experience in registers where uh, we although we will not be dealing with registers here but all the CPU registers are uh, sequential circuits only okay, and coupled circuitry. So I mean they are not just uh, uh, the, the, the register alone but the register which is the circuitry with them is part of sequential circuits. Then the storage of past information wherever is useful they are used okay and one of the common example which we will be dealing with this is counter. Now classification of sequential circuit broadly we classify depending on the time which they their internal state change. Now that is something very very important okay. Now what do I mean by changing the internal state okay. Now suppose we two people are talking with each other. Right? We are talking, I am talking to you and uh, suppose you are talking with me on a telephone. Right? Suppose both of us start talking at the same time, right? then nobody is going to listen to a particular situation. Right? So there has to be a synchronization right? that when I talk you listen and when you talk I listen. Right. So the synchronous, now the, over here this synchronization is slightly different in the sense that the change of state happens at discrete intervals only, at fraction of some particular moment of time. Okay. Now uh, you, you, uh, secondly the synchronous, uh, we use flip flop for that and a good choice for digital, digital device uh, is what we say, synchronous is a good choice for use uh, for discrete digital devices like a computer and that is why you will find that most of the sequential circuit which we built in computer are going to be synchronous. Asynchronous sequential circuits may be regarded as combinational circuits with feedback which we may not discuss here. They may be part of some different circuitry and different uh, I mean systems which we are not discussing over here. We are concerned with the synchronous circuits and that is where our flip flop and other circuitry is going to fall. Then synchronization in a sequential circuit, the synchronization in a sequential circuit is achieved by a clock pulse generator which gives continuous clock pulse. So our continuous clock pulse will be generated just like uh, ticks of the clock. Now remember these ticks are discrete, they are not continuous, it is not an analog clock just like digital clock that the moment happens a particular tick occurs in that particular time. So a clock pulse can have two states 0 or 1 and disabled or active state we call it. The storage element can change their state either when a clock pulse occurs or during the rising or falling edge of the clock pulse. Now further we will be simplifying our discussions to 
the latch, which we have discussed in this particular slide. A flip-flop is a, uh, now let's move on. So what we are saying is a clock pulse. So clock pulse are going to be zeros and ones. I'll just in a minute, we'll show you the diagram of that also. But uh, for the timing, let's try to understand the concept called flip-flop. So flip-flop, what happens? So first of all, we discuss about what are sequential circuits. So we will be talking about that sequential circuits are basically circuits where you will be having storage of elements also, right? And storage of elements and the remaining is the combinational circuits, which is basically gates. So combinational circuits have gates, sequential circuits have flip-flops and gates and flip-flops are the element which store the value of a binary cell. It, it, this particular uh, flip-flop, a binary a state or a value can be stored. That is how we uh, represent a flip-flop. So a flip-flop is a binary cell where which stores one bit of information. So remember, your RAM cell is going to be a flip-flop. It, it itself is a sequential circuit. Flip-flop can change its state when clock pulse occurs but when that particular thing happens, generally a flip-flop can change its states when the clock transits from 0 to 1, which is called rising edge or 1 to 0 falling edge. However, these things are built normally within the help of more transistors. So we are not going to discuss this complex behavior. What we are going to discuss, if a, if a storage element changes a stage when clock is exactly at 1, then it is called a latch. So we are going to discuss about the latch. A flip-flop is a edge triggered and latch is a level triggered. So when, when the clock edge becomes 1, only then that particular change takes place. So let's look into uh, now real circuits. We have done enough theory and theory uh, normally confuses. Theory normally uh, puts us into such a situation where uh, we feel, uh, oh, we need to do some practice about it. Okay, so let's look into the real situation here. Okay, so what we are watching is SR latch using NOR gate, okay. So this is a latch which is represented with the help of two NOR gates. There are two inputs to this particular latch. There are two NOR gates in this particular latch. The inputs are named S and R. S input is named set input and R input is named reset input. Why? We'll talk about it a little bit later. Then there are two NOR gates and we know the truth table of NOR gates but we will once again look at it. And there are two outputs and you refer to this output what, what is that Q and Q bar. Right. What it represents is if Q for example uh, this, is, uh, this is the main output which is called the output of the flip-flop. It can be 0 or 1 and Q bar is the complement state of this particular uh, Q. So if Q is 1, Q bar is going to be 0 and if Q is 0, Q bar is going to be 1 which is exactly mentioned over here. Okay, And this is a circuit. The circuit looks okay but what are these feedback loops, right? That is where the combinational circuit and sequential circuits start to differ. Okay, so feedback is essential in this particular gate. So let's study the behavior of it. And this is the clock pulse. So 0, 1, uh, then 0 state, then 1 state, and 0 state. And the same latch which we had earlier. So this particular latch is going to work when the level of the clock is 1. So as soon as, now let's start looking into the states of this particular uh, machine. So first of all, we go to the first uh, state, which is shown in the characteristic table. Now what is a characteristic table? It says, suppose the clock pulse is 1 and S and R inputs are set to 0 or 1. What is going to happen? There will be no change in the state of the flip-flop. Qt plus 1 is called the next state. That means after the clock pulse have occurred, what is going to happen? 
Okay. Once the clock pulse, one clock pulse has completed, what is going to happen? Then the next clock pulse happens, what will happen? So after one clock pulse, what is going to be the state of the flip flop? And QT happens to be the present state. Remember, QT can be, this is Q determines the state of the flip flop. If Q is zero, we get it, we say the flip flop is in reset state. If Q is one, we say flip flop is in set state. So this is how we recognize the uh, state of a particular flip-flop and q bar is going to be just complement that means when q is 0 q bar is going to be 1. So now let us look into the first st uh, entry of the characteristic table which says if s and r values are 0 and 0 there will not be any change in the state. So first we start with when s and r both are 0 even if the clock pulse occur what is the output of this particular AND gate? The output of AND gate is going to be 1 only when both the inputs are 1 and since R as well as S both are zeros, so output of this AND gate as well as this AND gate both will be 0, right? Both the inputs have to be 1 for an AND gate this particular, so what we will be getting? This value will be 0 as well as this value, so both values will be 0. Okay, when both values are 0 and suppose the state of Q happens to be 1 or let us say first we start with 0. So if this is 0, what is happening? In the NOR gate, this is 0, this is 1 and the NOR gate, very interesting property in NOR gate. What is the interesting property in NOR gate? If you have any of the value, input value as 1 the output is going to be 0. So what we see here when Q was 0, both the, both the inputs are 0 for this particular NOR gate. So what is going to be Q bar? It is going to remain at 1. So it was Q was 0, so Q bar will stay at 1. Since Q bar is 1, even if this is 0, say one of the value input value is 1. So this particular Q is going to stay at state 0 and this is exactly what is being shown over here. So when the input values that is S and R are 0 and 0, QT that is if Q was 0, it will stay at 0. But suppose Q was 1, it will happen the other way around. If Q was 1, then this value is going to be because one of the input is 1, so it is going to remain 0. Okay, so this is going to because 1, 0, 1 or 1, 0 is going to give us 0. Okay, and since this is also 0, this is also 0, so output of Q will still remain 1. Okay, so what we are going to get consistently this particular state which says that when S and R are 0, the next state is not going to change. So if Q was 0, it will stay 0. If Q was 1, it will stay at 1. So this is what it means by characteristic table 0, 0 means no change in state. Now let us see what happens when S happens to be 0 and R happens to be 1. Okay, And this is called a reset state. So now S goes to 1. Okay, So that is what we are assuming. So the flip flop should move to the set state irrespective of this particular state what we say Q. So as soon as S goes to 1, okay, the S goes to 1 then what happens? Clock pulse occurs. So at that point of time the output of this particular gate is going to be 1, isn't it? Because clock pulse have happened as well as set state, set is 1, R is 0, so that is alright, that is going to be 0, but the output of this is going to be 1. So any of the input is 1, what does it mean? Q bar will become 0 and Q, since Q bar becomes 0 as well as R was 0, so what will happen? This particular flip flop will move to state 1, 0 and 0. So this input is 0, this input is 0, both inputs are 0, so Q will become 1. Okay, And Q will stay at 1 even if this particular S goes to 0 because of the first state. When it goes back to 0, 0, there is no change in state. So Q will stay at 1, Q dash will stay at 0, Q 
you will once so this is what we find so there will be a change in state right when clock pulse occurs and the set the, the this is the state when there is set input is changed to one what we get the flip flop goes to the set stage all right now let's look into the reset stage now in the reset stage what you will find so this is the state for the reset so what happens r goes to 1 in this particular case and the clock pulse occur so output of this and gate is 1 so irrespective of this input what is going to happen q will become 0 as well as soon as q becomes 0 this value becomes 0 as well as s was 0 so both the values will become 0 that means the output of q bar is 1 so q is 0 q bar is 1 that is what is what we say reset state that is the output q has become 0 so this is the state 0 and 1 unfortunately when both the inputs goes 1 then there is a race condition because this is going to try to make it 0 and then this will try to make it 0 and there is going to be a race condition and that is what is not defined in undefined state called 1 1 in this particular flip flop you can check it the way i explained you other state this is exactly what going to happen first one state this will change to one then this will cause this to change to zero then this will cause uh, since this becomes zero it will call this become to uh, to become zero like that so there is going to be a racing condition and this is what is what we call characteristic table that is how a flip-flop behaves when different values change from like a set input is set or r input is set and a clock pulse occurs and this is how you will be getting the characteristic table of the flip-flop so this is the summary of sr flip-flop operation if no clock signal then nothing no out, no change in our, uh, the output irrespective of r and s values but at the occurrence of clock signal when s equals to a, r equals to 0 remain the output remains unchanged that is what we discussed when r equals to 1 s equals to 0 this is the reset state so the q will become 0 it will be reset to 0 and q dash will become 1 okay when s equals to 1 and r equals to 0 that is the set stage then output of flip flop q will become 1 and q bar will become 0 this is called the set state and when both goes to 1 then output is undefined may become 0 or 1 depending upon the interval uh, interval timing delay of the circuit which we have no control and that is why rs flip flop or sr flip flop is not considered for an input r equals to 1 as well as s equals to 1 now so there is problem with rs flip flop that is why this new flip flop jnk jk flip flop was designed so it is a modification of sr flip flop and two input j and k identical to s and r in general when j and k both are one then the flip flop output is complemented with clock transition so this is additional characteristics this is a modification over sr right in case of s and r when both values were one then the output used to become undefined in this particular case it is going to be complemented so that is another important uh, kind of a situation so suppose uh, you want to build a register circuit where complements are possible right you want to make complements possible then what what gate you are going or what flip flop you are going to use j and k flip flop jk flip flop not sr flip flop because over there complement is going to be difficult okay so this is once again uh, the characteristic table of this particular flip flop uh, the thing it is complement qt the the bottommost line this is what we are going to discuss now what you can see in this particular flip flop additional linkages are required right so whenever you do some modification some definite linkages are required and in this particular case the linkage is in the form of input so let's see when j equals to j and k both are one right so this is what and clock pulse is one so two inputs of the and gate are one and what we expect the third input to be one in that particular case so let's look into suppose q is one 
right? So obviously the initial state is q is 1 and q bar is 0. If that is the case, if q is 1, what is the output of this particular AND gate? 1, right? And what is the output of this particular AND gate? Because q dash or sorry q bar is 0, therefore output of this AND gate is going to be 0, right? So, so what we see here, this is 1, right? Earlier this was 1, q is 1 in the first stage. So this becomes 1. As soon as this becomes 1, what is going to happen? These three, these three NOR conditions will apply. That means output of this gate will become 0. As soon as the output of this particular gate becomes 0, the output of this was 0 and this output is 0. So this will become 1. So what has happened? If the previous state of the Q was 0, the state will change to now, oh sorry, if it was 1, q was 1, now it will be complemented to 0. Let us do it for the case of 1 once again so that you can understand this. Suppose q is now, oh so, sorry, we did it for 1. Now assume let us, we do it for q equals to 0. Now in case q equals to 0, then output of this AND gate is going to be 0, right? q is 0, so output of this AND gate is 0, right? And q was 0, so this, out, this input is right now not there. But what happens when q is 0, q bar is 1, so both j and k are 1, so output of this AND gate is going to be 1. As soon as the, this output will become 1, what is going to be the output of this NOR gate? It will become 0, okay? It will become 0. As soon as it becomes 0 and this is also 0, 0 and 0 will make it 1. So if q was 0, it will be complemented to 1, okay. There is slight delay what you can see in this particular case, right. So that delay is always going to be there uh, in, in, uh, in this kinds of circuit. But what is important for you to practice here, you, you study from your block how these states are changing and I think I have tried to explain you the similar thing. So you will be more, uh, I mean you will be uh, better knowing the this particular uh, behavior of this particular flip flop. Okay. Now, so far we have studied about the characteristic table of flip flop. But why these flip flops are going to be used? Obviously, they are going to be utilized for some kind of circuit designs. So, what are the two basic things which are used for circuit design? One is gate, logic gates, which are the AND or NOT, right? That is one category of gates which can do any kind of uh, design. The second kind of category of data, uh, uh, second is just NOR or just uh, this uh, NAND gate. So all these gates cal are called gates which are functionally complete in some sense because or universal gate in some books because they can be used to fabricate all logical functions. Okay, so this is how, uh, but flip flops are, I mean flip flops are slightly different than gates. Glade, gates are flow circuits, flip flops are state oriented circuits and the state actually represents that what is the current value stored in it. Now you must be wondering what happens to your RAM when you switch off the power, right? When you switch off the power everything gets wiped off. Why? Because the, the gates which are there, uh, the, it's not gates, the storage elements are primarily flip-flops, although slightly different. You, you can study uh, for DRAM and SRAM in block uh, 2 of this particular case, uh, course where the circuitry of DRAM uh, as well as SRAM is being discussed. So that is where you will know more about it. But for the time being, we assume that it is flip-flop based. Then if it is a flip-flop based, obviously the values will go to 0. Okay, uh, just as soon as the power is switched off. Okay, so this is what is the uh, basic characteristic that flip-flop stores and the gates, gates are flow circuits. Flip-flops are also made from uh, uh, flow circuits, that is gates, yet they are able to exhibit storage property because of the feedbacks. If feedbacks are not there, you are not going to get any storage, right? So that is how the storage is built in a computer system. Otherwise, there are other ways also for permanent storage you use uh, magnetic stuff and CD uh, that is uh, the optical memories and so on and so forth, 
right. So we are not right now discussing about it. We may discuss, uh, postpone that discussion for a later on session. Okay, now we move on to the excitation table. Now this is a very important uh, table. Why they are important? Because the characteristic table of flip-flops provide the information about the next state based on the present state and the input value. Such table of are useful for analysis of sequential circuits, but for sequential circuit design, we need to define the flip-flop input for the required transition from a given state to the next state. This is called excitation table of the flip-flop. So what we are saying, suppose the flip-flop is in a state 0 and it moves to a state 1, what input will make this particular transition? Why we need it? Well, when we explain the example of the counter, you will come to know why we need it, okay? But this is how the whole thing is. How to make excitation table for JK flip-flop? So we, uh, do, this example is from your block only and you can refer to this particular example. Now the first thing is what we said, transition from a present state to a next state. That is what we are considering transitions from, for example, present state is 0 and the next state is also 0, okay? So this is basically what we are saying, the present state is uh, reset, right? And the next state is also reset. Now how these states are possible? So look into the characteristic table. So the present state, what we are saying is 0. What is the next state? 0. So if we use J and K 0, there is no change of state in the next, uh, as far as next state is concerned. So 0 will remain 0, right? So for J is equal to 0, K is equal to 0, no change in state of flip-flop. That means the transition from 0 to 0 is there, right? Transition from 0 to 0, that is how we state it. Then in this particular case, when J equals to 0 and K is 1, right? So this is the reset, okay? So for the reset state, what happens? So for j equals to 0 and k is equal to 0, so whatever state the flip-flop, uh, the, suppose the flip-flop was in state 0 first, right? So flip-flop was state in 0, if it is in state 0, it will once again be set to state 0 by using 0 and 1. So initial state is 0, we use j equals to 0, k is equal to 0, no change, we will get 0. But if we apply initial state is 0, we apply j equals to 0, k is equal to 0, flip flip flops is reset to 0. So the next state is also 0. In both the cases from 0 to 0, both the inputs, uh, uh, inputs are applicable. So what does it mean? So if the flip flop is in state 0, to convert it to or to make, uh, to remain it in state 0, what's, what is the necessary condition? I put j as 0. But k can be 0 or 1, that means it does not matter, right? So k can be either 0 or 1. If flip-flop is in state 0 and if the j state is 0, then k does not matter. Then the next state of flip-flop is going to be 0. So this is the first entry of excitation table. What is going to be the next entry? Next entry is suppose present state from 0 to next state 1. Okay, so suppose in this particular case situation, the current state is 0. So now that current state 0, first is going to be, we complement it. If I complement, I will get the, this state that is one state or I set, right? So these are the two, two transitions which I can use. So what I need to do, so j equals to 1 and k equals to 0, I will get a set. So 0 to 1 movement or j equals to 1, k is equal to 1. In that particular case, flip-flop will complement from 0 to 1. So for moving from state 0 to 1 in jk flip-flop, the value of j has to be 1. k does not matter, right? Because k changes from 0 to 1, right? Likewise, what we do here, transition from present state 1 to next state 0, okay? So j equals to 0, k equals to 1, reset the flip, right? So j equals to 0, k is equal to 1, flip-flop. So current state is 1. So when the current state is 1, reset uh, the, the flip-flop to state 0, 
or complement it. Right. So this is what you will get j equals to 0 and k equals to 1. So that is the reset state you will go move from zero, 1 to 0 or that is the state is 1. So just complement it you will move from state 1 to 0. So j equals to 1 k equals to 1 that is the situation and it will complement flip flop from 1 to 0. So thus j can be 0 or 1 right that is no it does not matter but k has to be 1 in this particular case for the third case. And finally when we want state 1 to 1 only right. So this, this is possible when there is no change right or we set right. So this is how you can see so 1 0 right 1 0 and no change 0 0. So what is the what is the condition which we have j can be 0 or 1 that is no, does not matter but k has to be 0. So this is what it makes the excitation table for the flip flop ok. So this is the summary what you can say if present state was 0 and you to move from present state 0 to next state 0 you have to put j as 0 k you put anything 0 or 1 it will work ok. Present state 0 to move to next state 1 I have to make j as 1 k does not matter. The, uh, these are all the states which we have just discussed so you can refer to them ok. And then present state is 1 moving from 1 to 0 j does not matter set k to 1 and for 1 to 1 this j does not matter just change k to 0. So this is what is called the excitation table. So this table what you see here is called the excitation table where which basically defines from present state to next state what values of j k should be applied so that we get uh, the necessary transition. Now you can draw this uh, table for SR flip flop and two more flip flops are discussed one is D flip flop and T flip flop. You can have a look at D as well as T flip flop. We will define D flip flop very shortly because we will be using it for counter design. But this is in nutshell what we know about flip flop ok. So let us recap from the very beginning what we started with the concept of sequential circuit. Now what we know sequential circuit how sequential circuits are different from combinational circuits. Sequential circuits change their state right although they are flow circuits and they are feedbacks and they change their state only at the occurrence of the clock pulse. They do not change their state just as it is ok. Why, the, why that uh, uh, sequence is required what you saw in JK uh, state 1 1 there was race condition and that can happen when if you do not apply the clock ok. So clock is essential so that is why all the flip flops or which are employed in uh, computer follow a discrete state right this change change uh, sorry change of state in a discrete in time not at any point of time ok. However what we discussed was latch right. So from that particular point of view there are additional circuitry requirement for example you will study master slave flip flop where uh, there is uh, the change of state is determined by uh, uh, two, two flip flops are put in con uh, combination of each other. So you can study about the master slave flip flop where you can see that particular state and others uh, some of the flip flops are even hard made by hardware ok in the hardware which basically change their state in the falling edge or the rising edge. The whole thing gets stabilized and then at the falling edge or in the rising edge that particular change takes place. Okay. So this is the basic concept in the sense that uh, what we are referring to the, uh, the combinational circuits and well as well as the, uh, the flip flops ok. Now let us see how these particular things can be used to design a circuit like counter ok. So let us look into uh, an example anyway uh, this is the uh, before we do that excitation table for uh, JK flip flop is presented here QT and QT plus and what are the values these were just the same. So the symbol X in the table means do not care condition that it does not matter whether input is 0 or 1. So this is just the summary and let us see how we can design a sequential circuit. 
And what we are going to do, we are going to design a counter circuit. Now it's a very, very fundamental circuit used for timing and control. So counter is basically, uh, suppose you set the counter to 10. So obviously there will be state 1, step 2, step 3, step 4, step four, 5. Now all these steps are very, very important. Uh, you remember the first session which we had about von Neumann architecture and instruction execution? Now in that particular session we talked about the sequence, right? How the first the information, inst uh, that is uh, the first step is going to be the program counter register will be transferred to memory address register which then will be applied to get the information from the memory. So each step is very well defined in computer, right? To do an operation, there is a step-by-step -step operation. This is valid for, uh, I mean, CISC. In RISC, I mean, you can follow the similar const uh, construct, but uh, the RISC has pipelining concept, which is slightly extra. So we are not, don't get uh, too much confused right now on all these concepts. So learn first what is essential and then move to the next concept. Okay, so, so fundamental circuit, what we are saying, uh, so what happens, so there is a sequence, right? That is when we execute instructions, it is a typical sequence. And first instruction should be executed, uh, first uh, step should be executed first, then step two, step three. What are we talking about? We are talking about counter. Who is going to control? So the counter is going to control this particular thing. So if counter is in state one, the step one is going to be performed when counter is in state two, the second step is going to be performed counter is in state three, the next step is going to be confirmed. So this is how the sequential circuits are very, very important. And the time, because timing control is what is produced by uh, these sequential circuits. Right? So what is the problem which we want to do? We want to do a very simple design, right? Just for learning purposes, okay? So design a two-bit counter that changes its input when an external input X is one. So lock has to happen and the value of x has to, uh, x is also going to be 1, right? Into value x need to change to 1. So for the present design, we are using another flip-flop called P flip-flop. And for a 2-bit counter only, because uh, the more other bits, the, the speed is going to become very, very complex. So 2 flip-flops, so 2-bit so two counter, 2, two flip-flops needed, right? So we will be designing this particular circuit, okay? Okay, so let's uh, look into the D flip-flop characteristics, right? D is just RS flip-flop, SR flip-flop, except that J and K, uh, that is uh, one of the uh, D, uh, the condition, one is complemented and fed to another. Okay, so J and K are complemented uh, and fed to one another. So that means D flip-flop has just two states, two input values, right? Not uh, uh, J and K, uh, RS kind. D is just R, SR flip-flop uh, stuff. Okay, so if D input D is zero, then flip-flop is in clear state, as simple as that. If D input is one, flip-flop goes to set state. That's it. So these are the only two stuff. Okay, now the excitation table for this is very, very simple. So this is the characteristic table and the, this is the excitation table. So if I see QT to QT plus one, the value goes from zero to zero, Right, so how is 0 to 0? The value has to be 0. D value has to be, input value has to be 0. From 0 to 1, if I want to, uh, the state goes from 0 to 1, then obviously it has to be a set input. So the value of D which will be applied will be 1. Okay, if 1 has to go to 0, then from 1 to 0, that transition will take place when we apply D as 0. So that is what going to make the flip-flop into clear state. So this is what you can see. And once again, if you want to stay from 1 to 1, the D has to, has to be 1, only then the output is going to be 1. And that is what is being represented as the state in this particular case. Study it further. This is a very interesting case. Okay. Now let's try to visualize the change of states. Okay, so this is the our D flip-flop. This is the excitation table of D flip-flop. Now this is the present state. So suppose we have uh, two, uh, I think this is what we see. So what is this, these are the two flip-flops. 
So this is the D flip-flop, only one input D, all right? Now these two flip-flops, what we need to see that they exhibit states 0, 0 first, then each one should be complemented to uh, 0, 1, then the next state is going to be 1, 0, probably both need to be complemented, and then the last stage is going to be 1 and 1, both. So this is what is expected. This is what is expected in our design, all right? So to, uh, to do so, what we are saying, what we are saying, change of state. Let's uh, uh, study from, so what is the present state? Right, A, B, okay. So these, these are the possible cases, all the possible cases of present state. We have two flip-flops, A and B, as I showed to you, right? Okay, now A, B, if A, B, both can be in 0, 0, and there is an input, I said that if in our uh, problem statement we said, they will change state when x is 1, right? So, but x can also be 0 for some time during, uh, in that particular process. So, this can be changed. So, when x is up changed to 1, then only. So that means the step 1 is completed, x will be raised to 1. So, that is how the next, state, uh, next step is going to be happening. So, what happens? A, B, when they are both are 0, 0, the next state should be 0, 0 only. But as soon as x becomes 1, their state should go from a state should remain 0, but B will go to 1, right? Then the next state, at the state 0, 1, when the input is 0, once again they stay at the state 0 and 1, okay? And what happens then when, when 0 and 1, uh, when, when uh, X becomes 1, what state they should move? A should go to 1 and this should go to state 0. So that is what we expect. So from 0, 1, we move to 1, 0, right? 0, 1, and 2 now, technically, right? Uh, try to understand it in that particular fashion. Okay. And once again, x is, uh, x is 0, so there is no change in the state. Then x once again become 1. Then what is the next state from 1, 0? 1, 1, all right? And then 1, 1, 0. No change in 1, 1 stage. And finally, once when from after 1, 1, what is going to be the next state? 0, 0. Because the, all the states has expired. So how the flip-flop is going to behave? It is going to count till 3. 0, 1, 2, 3. Then 0, 1, 2, 3. So that is how this particular flip-flop is going to uh, alternate. Uh, but that particular alteration is going to come only when the value of x is 1. Right? When x equals to 0, then there is no change in state. Right? Now, let's look into how this is going to be, what, is, what are the values of dA which we should have and what should be the value of dB for this particular case. So, first I have shown the values for dA equals to dA. Now, please notice A present state, A next state. This is the characteristic table. So, A 0 to 0, what should be the value of 0 to 0? The D value has to be 0. What is the value? A 0 to 0 once again, the D value has to be 0. But A now moves from 0 to, once again 0 to 0. So, D is also 0. Now, here A moves, the present state of A is changed from 0 to 1. So, for that, from 0 to 1, what is the D value we need? 1. So that is what is being shown. All right. Then from 1, the next state is 1, you stay in 1. So once again, the from 1 to 1, you need 1. Okay. Then from 1 to 1, once again, you need 1. Okay. Then 1 and 1, still you need 1. And then finally, from state 1 to 0, so what, what is going to happen? The DA value from 1 to 0, right? This is what? So the 0 is what is going to be needed. So you can see, it is the excitation table which is required to determine what should be the values of DA. And it is simple translation, right? I mean, this, this is not rocket science. This is simple logic, right? And simple logic makes complex logic, remember that. Okay, even the rocket science has been built from the very, very simple logic like these ones. All right, so this is for DA. Let's look into for DB. You see all the green, 0 to 0, 0, 0 to 1, you need 1, right? So this is what 1. 
then 1 to 1, you need 1. Okay, so that's it. So 1, 0, like that. You can see from 1 to uh, 1 to 0, you need 0, right? 1 to 0, you need 0, right? So db, db should be this. So now what we have done, what we have done, if I once again uh, bring you this particular thing, what we have done, what we have stated that the d input will be dependent on number one, the present state, okay? So d input, what we want is something like this. The input to d has to be based on the present state of the flip-flop as well as the input value of the flip-flop. Okay, so this is what we are trying to ascertain at this particular time. So what we have, present state, input, what we expect as the output as next state, this is only used for the design purposes, right? But what is required for us is the present state and the input value and these three values are going to determine dA and dB. The required dA and dB will bring the change to the next state, right? So the required value of dA and dB, these values are going to bring this particular change in the state of the flip-flop A and flip-flop B. So that is how this whole circuit is to be designed. So what we are looking at, so technically these three forms are our input, Next state is never an input, right? Next state is only an effect of application of dA, right? So our output technically is dA. So the present state of flip-flop, that is a feedback input. The input, this is an external input. And dA is what we expect, which will bring in the required change from present state to the next state for dA. Uh, that is for flip-flop A and DB is the required input which will re be required to uh, get the transition of present state B to next state B. So what is technically required for us is not the next state, right? But what becomes our input and output? Our input is the present state and the external input and our output becomes input to the flip-flop. Now this is slightly difficult to understand, but let's look into this particular diagram, right? In a sense, the value of D is being controlled by the circuit, which includes the present value of A, all right? Which includes the present value of A. Forget about the circuit, but this particular circuit needs to be designed, okay? So DA, this is, suppose this is A flip-flop, this is B flip-flop, then this DA is going to be the effect of this particular combinational circuit. Similarly, the DB, this is going to be the effect of this particular combinational circuit. So this is what we want to do, right? Using the value of A, uh, that is the using the value, the current, current uh, state of the flip-flop and X and the current state of B flip-flop. So both will be required in some sense. So how we can do the design? We always do the design with the help of K-maps. All right. So this is the K-map for DA and DB. So this was the DA. This is the output that is input to the flip-flop. But technically this is the output which we are expecting. This is the present state. This is the second input. So these three are the inputs. So it is going to be a K map which will be having three inputs and one output that means one uh, K map will be for DA and the second K map will be for DB. Okay, so we simply can do this particular plotting now. You have done the K maps uh, con construction in the previous session. So what you can see over here, uh, very simply A, B and X are here. So uh, this is uh, 1, 2, 3, whatever we, we can refer to, 0, 1, and uh, the state which you, you can say uh, the, for DA, for DA what we see in 3, so this is the 3, right? Then we have uh, 4, 5, and 6. So 3, 4, 5, 6, where we have 1s, right? Now uh, we need to find the 
uh, adjacencies for these. Now, unfortunately, very few adjacencies are there. One adjacency is 4 and 5, right? Second adjacency is 4 and 6, right? Within the 4 and 5, A, right? A is common. So, A comes here. What is changing here is X, right? X goes from 0 to 1. So, B prime because B is 0 in both the cases. So, B prime. So, first term is A B prime plus A X prime happens to be the second adjacency between 6 and 4. So, they are circulated. So, there is an adjacency between 6 and 4 and what you see once again it will have a term A, right? And what is changing between these two cases? B and we have X prime. So, this is what is the term and this particular one unfortunately has no adjacency. That is why this min term is appearing in this particular case, right? A prime, A is 0, B and X. So, this is A prime, B and X, all right? And this is what my, uh, for DA, for DA, this is what is the circuitry required, AB prime plus AX prime plus A prime BX, all right? And for uh, the second case, for the DB, you simply require, uh, luckily for us, you, you plot it and we get two adjacencies in this particular case and uh, those both uh, adjacency A is eliminated. This will be uh, 0, 1. So, this is B prime X and this is uh, B X prime. So, this is what you can see in F, all right. So, this is how we formulated the, these are the inputs, these are the outputs. We make the K maps and we find out what should be the function for A that is, this is DA. So, DA equals to this. So, for DA, we will be drawing this particular circuit. And for DB, we will be drawing this particular circuit. And this is what is this circuit, what you can uh, see from the previous one. So, let us see AB prime, okay. So, A is coming here, all right. B is here, right. So, AB prime, somewhere AB prime will come, right. Okay, so some AND gate will be utilized, okay. So, uh, B prime is over here, so it is coming over here. So, A is coming here, B prime is coming from bottom, you, slightly not visible, but you can refer to the block. So, A B prime is the output of this particular AND gate, okay. Okay, and the second term is A X prime, all right. So, X prime happens to be, X has to pass through a not, so this is, a is coming from here and X prime is here. So, this AND gate, so this is, these are the two AND gates and this third AND gate had three inputs, right? And what are those three inputs? A prime, B, X, all right? So, A prime, A prime, is, uh, X is coming, you can say X is here, right? B is coming here, right? And A prime is this particular line. So, this three AND gates, right? For each term, these three AND gates we are getting, all right. Inversion is over here. For flip-flop, we already have A prime and A. So, we are directly taking input from there rather than utilizing an uh, NOR, uh, that, not, uh, that is inverter gate or uh, inversion, right. So, a NOT gate, we are not using any more NOT gate except for X because flip-flop already have that is A as well as A prime. All right, so this is what makes the circuitry. Then we pass through it an OR gate and that forms the D input. This is the representation, okay? So this is the representation. So you can see the circuitry is exactly based on what we have represented with the help of this particular K map, all right? And the second circuitry that you can uh, check for yourself, okay? So this is B and this is BX, BX prime and this is X and B prime X. So, you can refer to that and this is NAND, uh, this is, uh, uh, that is the OR gate, it passes through the, the, you get a value D in this particular case, right? So, both 
the way you, now this is the state which you have designed and this flip-flop now is going to behave exactly in the fashion which we want when x becomes 1 suppose this was in state 0 0 it will change to 0 1 then x is 1 once again it will change from uh, 0 1 to 1 0 then it will go to 1 1 and finally it will go to 0 0 state so this is how you are able to construct important circuits you know, it's not simple, but it is very interesting, right? You are able to construct circuits and with the help of just gates and flip-flops. And that makes it very, very exciting. In fact, the whole computer has been made on this particular thing. So if, I, if you want to make register, if you want to, we have not done many designs in your block, okay? There is a purpose for it. You should know the basics. You should understand the basics. You should be able to comprehend it and express it, okay, and solve the problems related to it, simpler problems. We are, we are not trying to make you expert uh, circuit designers for the time being because that expert circuit designing has moved a lot ahead now. However, our purpose is for you to appreciate that what goes into the computer. The more you appreciate all these kinds of logic, the better is going to be your programming and other kind of stuff. And maybe, who knows, in near future, you may be going into uh, somewhere, uh, company like Intel or other companies, where you, uh, you might have to do a little bit of hardware design also. So you will understand the basic and then you can utilize tools to bring all those kinds of things and you will be able to make something out of it. So, it's always important to know the basics, especially in computer science. And the more you know, the better you are. In fact, uh, many a times we say that the more you know, uh, the less you uh, feel that you, you uh, know about computer science. Because the, if you know less, then you feel great. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm simply great in the area of computer science. But if I know a bit less, if I know a bit more, then I realize how much less I know, right? So uh, think about that dichotomy and, and do all the, attempt all the questions given and check your progress of your block and read the functioning of all the sequential circuits which are given in the block. So this, uh, with this, I think we have come to an end of block one. Today, what we have discussed is primarily focused on sequential circuits where we started with some basic things about the sequential circuits which were not very exciting, right, They're just the theoretical inputs. But then when we moved on to the flip-flops and then from there we moved on to the design of the sequential circuit. I hope you will enjoy this particular stuff from your block. Now, next session onwards, we will be moving to block two, some of the memory and related stuff. Uh, for the time being, bye for now. We'll see you in the next session. Thank you.